Okay, with me now is Chris Krebs, who was the first director of CISA. He's now a partner with Krebs Stamos Group. Uh, and Chris, I, I feel like we, we all know each other really well on these topics because we've been talking, we've been dealing with it quite a bit over the last few months. And I have to say, that was the most startling fact that we discovered today, was finding out that CISA was not looped into this. And I think this has been sort of your, I think, uh, you've been uh, evangel evangelizing about this, um, if you will, that CISA isn't looped in and yet it's supposed to be. How did this happen? Well, I first of all, Chuck, thanks for having me on. And but look, look at Brandon Wales, the acting director. Uh, look at his response. And and you ask yourself the question: Why is it like this? Why do we not know more? Why do we not have more information? Why aren't breaches or incidents at critical national infrastructure like Colonial? Uh, you know, why isn't that more automatic? And uh, there are a couple different conversations having on, uh, happening on the Hill right now. Uh, and it was a recommendation out of last year's Cyberspace Solarium Commission that critical national infrastructure, particularly the systemically important infrastructure, needs to have certain requirements in place where they have a bad day that they get that information to the partners quickly. Now, now the last piece here that I would note is that uh, I, my sense of things is that it would be helpful that if Colonial could share what the initial vector of attack, how the bad guys got in, and if they could share that quickly to make sure that there's not another uh, uh, ransomware attack that happens in the next week or so, that would be a net policy and operational positive for the entire country. When you were at CISA, what is, is there any regular contact between CISA and private companies like Colonial, when there's not a when there's not a a, a major uh, a major attack going on, like what it, what is the regular dialogue that takes place between private companies that oversee critical infrastructure in CISA? Well, I think you start with the fact that there are hundreds of thousands of companies in the United States that ha that are owning and operating our nation's critical infrastructure. And when you step back and think about critical infrastructure, it's everything from banks to bridges, from schools to sewers, and everything in between. Uh, and so it is a massive uh, operational uh, scope. There are a number of mechanisms that we and the, the Department of Homeland Security and other agencies have established over the years to coordinate with owners and operators of infrastructure. But ultimately, uh, particularly in the non-regulatory space where CISA operated, it's a voluntary public-private partnership. So the, the organization has to come to the government. Now, that's not to give the government a free pass. The government has to have something of value to attract the pub or the private sector organization to come work with us. And I think that's the biggest right. struggle right now. Is there a way to model this off of how the Pentagon does it? You know, look, I, I'm, I'm sure you have friends that have done this. I've got uh, I've known people who work for the government. And their and their their job is to make sure the defense contractors are correctly handling classified material and things like that, making sure their security systems are up to are up to snuff so that that it, stuff isn't pilfered from them. Is there a way to create a similar relationship? So I think the difference there, Chuck, is that those private sector organizations are choosing to contract with the federal government. And the federal government has the power of the purse to uh, set certain standards. And I think what you're going to see sometime in the pretty near future is a cybersecurity executive order out of the White House that will raise the bar on software standards, at least for those uh, mm. procured by the federal government. There will be trickle down effects, though, into the private sector. The, the separate piece here, though, is I think we need to uh, have a have a pretty real conversation with our businesses 
that have enjoyed a significant amount of success in the economy, if you're in a position where you own uh, you know, delivery for 50% of the refined product in a major region, the United States, uh, if not yeah. the largest pipeline in the United States, you've got a certain obligation and you have some corporate citizenship responsibilities that you need to live up to. And again, the, the, the investigation is still in the early stages here with Colonial, uh, but, but right. we all know that everybody needs to do a little bit more on cybersecurity. All right, now let's talk about the um, the perpetrators of this. It's a Russian crime gang, it appears, a cyber gang. But I, I want to play something that the chairman of the House Intelligence Committee said earlier today, that maybe Russian Russia, the government, does have more responsibility here. Take a listen to him, what he said. This is a known actor operating out of Russia. Uh, and, you know, from my own perspective, uh, Russia has the ability to shut people like this down if they choose to. Uh, so I think they have responsibility here, even if they're not engaged in the conduct themselves. From what you know about this group, um, is Congressman Schiff right that they have a, a, some, some deep ties to the GRU and, and the Russian intelligence uh, folks? So uh, broadly speaking, I think Chairman Schiff is spot on. I, I'm not uh, certain that this crew, the dark side crew, is tied to intelligence services, nor you know their their predecessor organization, so Nakibi, uh, and and the Gan Crab crew. But it's it's blatantly obvious to anyone that's been paying attention in the last four or five years that ransomware is a business and it's a successful business that operates out of Russia and some of the former Soviet states. And it is a almost a permitted uh, business by the intelligence services. Look at their techniques. They actually deploy right. their ransomware. And as a part of the deployment, they check for Russian language, pa language packages on the, the infected computers. And if they find it, they exit out. That tells me that, you know, uh, as I said it earlier today, they know where their bread's buttered and they're not going to mess. Uh, they're not going to, you know, uh, uh, tee off against their their hosts. So uh, I think the, I think President Biden was absolutely right. He's got an opportunity to have a conversation with with President Putin and say, knock it off. This ends. This ends now. Um, this is an attack on critical infrastructure. Uh, Chris, is is ransom is dealing with ransomware a whack-a-mole that's in that, that is going to be impossible to deal with, or will at some point we have the technological tools to to uh, uh, at least cause some uh, pain for these ransom cyber attackers? Oh, I, I absolutely think that there is an approach that we can adopt that will uh, change the game. I think first we, we've got to have uh, better cyber defenses here in the United States. I think President Biden's got a great opportunity this summer to probably pull together a couple different cybersecurity summits, bring in CEOs of large businesses, medium businesses, meet with state and local executives, and ask them what more they need. You know, the, the government can do a lot uh, to help here, but ultimately there are a lot of decisions that need to be made in the boardroom and in the C-suite to improve cybersecurity investments. I think the second thing we need to do and this is, is a, break this is a, the business model. Yeah. Oh, Break the business model. Well, that, yes. uh, it, it, a lot of this is enabled by cryptocurrency. Right. Uh, well, talk about opening up a can of worms there uh, and debating cryptocurrency. Uh, that we will leave for another time and perhaps another pair of, of folks. Uh Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. You should know that you can follow today's top stories and breaking news and catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.